Hello and welcome back to another guide of Rupa Universalis for me and Texas mod. So, based on a discussion I had on a Discord, or I followed a discussion on a Discord, I thought a guide on communication efficiency might be a good idea. So, as mentioned earlier, communication efficiency is present in your provinces as a value how well it is connected in your empire. So, Naples as our capital of course has 100% because it's the seat of our government. Now if you go to Salento, for example, this has 72% communication efficiency. And this costs us almost, uh, it's, it's scaled 1 to run, so it costs us 0 0.28 um, monthly autonomy change. So that's quite a lot because that's basically more than we could get from legitimacy. Um, I mean, if you below 50 legit legitimacy, I think you get a negative on it, in fact. So, um, be careful with that. And improving communication efficiency is one of the best ways to increase your autonomy. And autonomy means that the lower it is, less corruption you have, more money you can get from your, from your nobility and stuff like that. So, that's what you want to improve, especially in the early game, because that's your only way to improve. Uh, communication efficiency quickly because the other path increasing centralization is slow reforming your governments which are going to also introduce autonomy modifiers is also very slow so you want to most efficiently build up your country and the first takeaway always go for harborages if you can so the best way to improve your communication efficiency is by building harbors so each harbor level decreases the embarkation cost. Embarkation cost is nothing else than how much does it cost you to send someone from somewhere to this province. And the lower the modifier is, here it says embark cost for communication efficiency is 60%, while in our capital it's already a level 6 harbor, it's only 10%. So compared to a province which doesn't have any harbor, we are at 10% efficiency here. Uh, yeah, so it's... 10 times better than having no harbor. And that's very, very massive, of course. So you want to improve harbor riches if possible. If you have the case, for example, that you have a province like Abruzzo here, which is inland, then you want to think about, okay, how can I connect it here? And the current connection, which you could find out for example, by using the debug mode, which is going to show you the province IDs. Um, the communication pop-up here shows you that the runner origin is 122, which is the province next to it here. And this province shows you that it is from 2562 here. So the path of the communication efficiency is through these provinces here. Now, to improve the communication efficiency of Abruzzo now, you would need to build roads to all these provinces. And I definitely can't recommend it, so always think about other options here. You could, for example, build up this harbor, which is getting communication efficiency from 2531, which is Naples. So you could, for example, build up the harbor here, build the roads up and there, connect these two, therefore making a shorter way, which is all around the peninsula. Music is stopping for some reason. So always always go with the harbor, harborage option because you get fleet uh, force limit from that, you get much more efficient communication efficiency and you get bonuses to trade and you probably want to do it in cities. Therefore, that's always recommendable. Now, in regards to harbors, you always want to check out the trade map mode and check out for these natural locations here because they are going to give you massive cost reductions on harbor infrastructure. For example, this one, minus 50%. So I'm going to build this one up to like a level four or five harbor because it's relatively cheap and very relatively efficient. And therefore reducing the um, communication efficiency, uh, increasing your communication efficiency for the island here massively. So that's what you want to do. And therefore increasing, uh, decreasing your local autonomy. And if you plan your campaign and think about where do I want to conquer, do I want to go into the Balkans, for example, then check out the harbors and check out where is a really cheap one, for example. Here, Botia, Butia, I think is 
another minus 20% however Nafplion minus 20% so always check out what you can get here before you conquer widely and also as a recommendation for example if you play Naples always go for coastal provinces because you can connect them quickly because you have a very good harbor in Naples already um, and if you have inland provinces like if you conquer stuff from Serbia for example you could vassalize Serbia and keep them inland because the communication efficiency will be terrible when you go at least like one province inwards as we can see here it's immediately much worse here inwards it will be even worse than the Balkans so avoid it in the early game especially until you have enough cash to build roads and stuff like that build up a city build up a harbor for example in Durazzo if you, if you can and therefore only go for coasts Another thing you can do is build a capital. Capital is giving you bonuses if you put it into your capital, the capital, um, then you get a bonus on your whole empire. It says here effects if capital global CE reduction 6% if you build level 1. So that's good, it's for everything. Very massive, very important. But the building is quite expensive, only build it if you have a solid income, like more than 2, 5, 6 ducats per month, because it's going to cost you like 1 per month probably. And you need like 60, 60k, 100k residents to build it in a decent time frame. It's expensive, it's worth it, but you need enough infrastructure present to build it. There are some states uh, or provinces which start with one. I think it's Paris, for example, which starts with level 1, yeah, here. And I think Constantinople also starts with level 1 or 2, 1. So, most of the other provinces have to build it. And, therefore, capitals, massively worth it. You can even build them in a non-capital province, for example, if you were to connect to Barcelona here and conquer it, then I would probably consider building a capital here, because it also has an effect on these provinces. It's going to reduce the time from Naples to Barcelona by, on level 1, 8% plus flat 2%, so that's a lot in the end, very much. Yeah, that's... The general advice for what you want to build, always harborages first and you always want to focus on your capital because they have a two-sided effect. So it's the cost for embarkation, like sending, sending communication efficiency is also influenced by the harborage from the sending location. So building up a harborage in your capital first is very, very recommendable and not going above level 3 on your other provinces is probably a wise move at start unless you have something like Venice which you conquered this might be an exception but first build your capital like level 6 and the capital of level 1 before you expand everything else to a higher level probably because this one is the biggest impact at start and afterwards your provinces play a role so that's to the general approach now what you want to do you want to look out for rivers you have uh, oceans of course like the Mediterranean obviously but what you want to check out is river sections you have large rivers like the Danube or the Loire or whatever or the Vistula in Europe which are of course navigate navigable so ships can go there and the map mode for river sections is very useful here so you let's select Let's select the European continent here, get value, uh, let's put it on a linear scale here, and there we go. Okay, they are all red because we don't have that many rivers, but it doesn't matter. So, all the red provinces here are now are rivers, which are theoretically navigable. So, what you want to do here is... Okay, that didn't. Uh, that was the wrong calculation I selected here. Let's do it again. Other map mode, river sections. Uh, let's European continent. Let's go with 32 as a calculation, and there we go. I hope we have less than 32 river sections here. 
So, um, let's tag to Hungary, in fact, to make it easier here. As you can see, this is the Danube River section here. It's this massive run here with, with some rivers leading into the Danube. So for example, you have a river section directly next to it. You also have connections up here. You have connection to the south here. And that's very important because you, it's, you can build harbors on these provinces as already present in Pest here or in Vienna here. And they are extremely useful. So you could prob you can send communication efficiency faster to Bakau on the other side of the Carpathian Mountains than you probably can by roads in the early game. So this is already terrible autonomy here in Hungary and if you conquer to the east it's only getting worse. But if you take the river sections here and build up some stuff, it's much cheaper and better to get the communication efficiency here and therefore the autonomy lower here. That's one way of thing uh, one important thing. But also what you want to do is to look for neighboring river sections. As I said here, we have uh, tributaries or subsidiaries of the Danube here, like these provinces here. If you have a harbor here and you have a harbor here, they are going to connect it because they are one con considered more or less one river section. But most importantly or mo most interesting is, for example, you have the Danube here and you have the Vistula up here. And you have the Elbe up here, which is like going into Germany. And you only have like one province beneath, uh, between them to connect to the Danube. So you want in fact to check out the provinces here. And you want to, for example, check simple terrain here. To see like, okay, where could I maybe make a road connection from, from the Danube river system to the Northern river system. And in this case, for example, recommendable would be to go through Moravia and Hradisko, or how it's spelled here, because it's only wooded hills and wooded hills are not that terrible for communication efficiency if you build roads here. For example, the other path would be to go through Shepes here, but Shepes has uh, forest mountains which are terrible, 5.5 times costs for communication efficiency, so you are not going to get through that very quickly. But you could search for provinces which are going to connect river sections quite quickly, like going from uh, Presborok to Hradishke to Ratibor. So that could be something you want to invest to. It's also pretty rich, that region, so they are decently developed already. That's one way you want to, uh, one thing you want to check out, and the other stuff is that you want to check out larger river sections like the ones in the east for example. You have the Volga here, you have the Dnieper here, you have uh, other rivers which I don't know in detail here. And if you check it out in detail you see like here's a river section, one province to the north is another river section and to the west is another river section and to the south is another river section. So for example you could build up Let's tag to Lithuania, in fact. Tag lit. There we go. What you can do here, you could build up cities here and here, 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 and here. And then all of these river sections could be connected via roads and harbors. So harbor here and harbor here is going to connect these two. Harbor here and harbor here is going to connect these two. But ha and harbor here and harbor here is going to connect these two. So therefore you can have an extremely improved communication efficiency system. For example, if you are based in Muscovy, you could connect here. But also if you play, for example, Lithuania and you conquer East and you want to connect into from Vilnius into Polak, from Polak into Vichybysk to uh, however it's spelled. It's so very important to check out this map mode to understand how you maybe want to build harbor riches and, and expand and conquer. And of course you always have to consider like the normal oceans. Uh, of course if you play Sweden for example, you, similar to Naples, you want to check out for harbors on the other side of the ocean here. 
of the Baltic Sea to, for example, expand into Königsberg or expand into Riga or expand into Finland here or into the east here to St. Petersburg. So that's what you want to do. Always check out for harbors and stuff like that. Only build roads if you have an emergency or, or if you are super rich. You really don't want to build roads in the early game. So let's go back to Naples. So as a rule of thumb, build up your capital first, build a capital when you have enough urban population and build up key cities like where you have a harbor modifier if you can base your empire around harbors, which I always want to recommend. And of course build cities with residents and amenities in these provinces with harbors. The bonuses you get to commerce and everything are super important and can be the main money makers of an early empire. If, if well managed. Yeah, and that's it for communication efficiency. And I think one last advice on roads again is don't do them too early. They are quite expensive. And also the modifier, how much they improve the CE is based on the type of terrain they are going through. So if you read the, the road networks uh, pathing information, it tells you that the base travel time reduction is like from 100% down to 90% on level two, that's only 10% improvement. The modifier for terrain penalties is of course much more improved. So the roads are stronger on ugly terrain. However, the general debuff on ugly terrain is quite strong. So Yes, it's some kind of, they're a bit better there, but they're still expensive. So only do roads in cases you really don't have any other options or you don't have any kind of communication connection at all. For example, if we go back to Hungary again, connecting into the East might be one of your interests due just to get the reduction of the communication and the autonomy here. Because there are some gold mines here, which of course are worth a while. And you also have a decent development in the east here, which you can improve. I think they have quite a lot of forest here. Yeah, 200 forests. So you could have a game industry like hunting and forestry. You maybe want to tap into that wealth if you build a little bit of infrastructure here. So, for example, if you want to connect to Siebenbürgen here, you would need to find the pathway it takes it goes from here to Coloss, from Coloss to Bihar from Bihar probably here let's check it out no it's going here in fact to Xongrad or how it's spelled and then to Boro and then to Pest so this is the pathway the communication efficiency currently is taking and that's of course a lot of roads and roads are not the most efficient path so you maybe want to check out can we do that can we improve for example we can improve the harbor here to have a better connection from here to here but we could also check out if we maybe want to conquer severine and the connections here to rather use from severine a road here or we want to connect here to slam Ranich. and from this harbor if we want to build one connect into siebenbürgen from the east could also be faster. So always think about what you maybe want to do and test out. Or you could go, as I recommended earlier, conquer everything here or vesselize everything here. Communication efficiency also works through vessels, so you don't need to own everything here. Um, and build up Macau and then spread your eastern communication efficiency from there, which is also going to help if you go further east. With your road network here in Transylvania wouldn't change that much. Yeah, and that's it in regards to communication efficiency. Leave a like and ask questions if you need anything answered or I make another video about it and see you next time.